always like to three, two, one. <sighs> so hi, folks, my name is Brent Ozar, and I'm going to be talking about in this session, watch Brent tune queries. Some sessions there, you kind of have to explain the title. This session, it's really clear what it says on the tin. That's exactly what I'm going to be doing. I'm not going to even explain anything about my background. I'm just going to go jump in so that we can spend a maximum amount of time tuning this query. I'm going to start with SQL Server 2019. I'm using the latest and greatest SQL Server as of right now. It's Cumulative Update 6. I'm using the large version of the Stack Overflow database, the 2018-06 version. It's about 400 gigs in size, ballpark. And I've assumed that I'm going to go ahead and use the latest and greatest compatibility level. And I'm going to give SQL Server the best chance that I can possibly give it. And then I've also created some indexes in order to help my query go faster. I'm going to assume that the people who brought me this query have already done some index and query tuning. They put in these indexes in place. I'll just go ahead and highlight these and execute them and see it fails because the index already exists. Oh, I should also state, I'm a terrible presenter. Right up at the very top there, it has brentozar.com slash go slash tune queries. This entire query, the demo database, plus videos of me doing this at other conferences, SQL Relay, at a, a online stuff, live streaming, doing different queries every single time. Like today's query is totally brand new as well. So down here, my users have given me this query that they say is performing really slowly. They've got this stored procedure here where we've said, go find me the top users in a given location. This query takes a parameter for location, a start and end date, and it's hitting the Stack Overflow database to find all the users who live in a given location and it's trying to find the questions and answers and the comments that they've posted inside that date range. Seems pretty fair. It's not using cursors or uh, looping through stuff while things happen. Seems pretty straightforward. Let's go see what happens when we run it. Now, whenever someone brings me a query to go tune, I like to work off of the real execution plan. I don't mean the, the estimated plan that SQL Server built before the query started, because here's the thing. Most of the time when SQL Server estimates query plans and designs out which table it's going to process first, how much memory it's going to need, how much parallelism it's going to need, etc. Most of the time, all day, every day, your SQL Server is doing a heroic job of accomplishing that task. It's doing 99.99% of the time, it's doing a great job at building query plans. It's one in a hundred or one in a thousand query plans that really blows chunks. And those are the ones that I'm going to have to focus on tuning to make perform as well as possible. When those are happening, it's often because SQL Server's estimates and its actuals didn't line up. It's like me if I don't look at the shopping list. If I just go to the store, my wife hands me a list, and I just go start shopping, I might have only grabbed a hand cart when really I need a whole push trolley because my wife has asked me to get all kinds of stuff, especially alcohol because she has to deal with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go take this query, and since it, it only does reads, it looks like, it doesn't look like it writes any data, let's go ahead and just put it into production, and then let's go turn on our plans. I'm going to turn on actual execution plans up here and turn on my query tuning options, and then execute the query. And while it executes, I'm going to explain what I mean about my query tuning options. Set statistics I.O. and time give me a rough idea of how much work SQL Server has done in order to accomplish this query, like how many pages it's read, how much CPU time it's burned, and, well, things aren't looking good. I can see why users are getting frustrated. Now, when you have a query that takes a long time to run, you may want to find out what its execution plan looks like, and you've got a lot of options to look while the query is running. My personal favorite is using SP Blitz Who. SP Blitz Who on modern versions of SQL Server will give you the live query plan while the query is running. And that's super helpful to me because I can click on it 
And it's not animated, it's not showing things move through the query as it works, but it does show me not really the progress either, because I can't really tell which operators are completely done. There may be some that are still pushing rows through. Remember, this isn't the final. We're just looking at one snap moment in time when SP Blitz who ran. But I can see things like SQL Server estimated 229 rows were going to come back, when in actuality, almost a million rows came back. If I could give you one thing, just one thing to walk away with from this session, and I have to give you this early because you may walk away at any time. Who could blame you? I'm a terrible presenter. If I could give you just one thing to walk away with from this session, look at estimates versus actuals. Start at the top right of the query plan. At the top right of the query plan was the first thing basically that SQL Server decided to do. I don't always read a plan from right to left, but when I'm in a hurry and I just want to get a quick glance, I'm going to read from right to left and I'm going to compare the estimates versus actuals. Now in the old dark days when your grandfather and I were doing query tuning, not together, I never knew him during the war, if I go through and I look, SQL Server says estimated number of rows uh, per execution. So this is how many rows he thought it was going to bring back. And then actual number of rows for all executions is how many rows he actually brought back. Now I apologize for the scattershot look of this query plan here. Microsoft, when they need to dump things onto a tooltip, they tend to use one of two approaches. Either they alphabetize it, which makes no sense for how you want to read it, or they load up the data cannon and they just fire it at the screen. They have a shoulder-mounted data cannon that their developers do, and they blast it right at the screen. Wherever the data happens to end up, that's where it ends up. Here you can see that, for example, we lost the word actual in the shrapnel here. Sometimes things say actual, sometimes they don't say actual. Actuals and estimated are all over the place. It makes no logical sense. So these days, instead of using the tooltip, what we do these days is we just hover our mouse over each operator, and the bottom number is the number that SQL Server expected to come out, and the top number is the actual number of rows that came out. So here, we brought back 449 rows of 120 expected rows. That's great. Now look, I should say before I say that's great, you have human expectations. You believe that SQL Server should get everything exactly right. I have really low expectations. I'm happy if SQL Server's guesses are within about 10x. Meaning, he estimated 120 rows were going to come back. I'd be happy if anywhere between like 12 and 1200 rows came back. At least it would be vaguely correct. Generally speaking, when estimates versus actual are within about 10x, SQL Server understands the work that's going to be involved in the query. I didn't say the query was going to be fast. I just said that SQL Server understands how much work is going to be involved in the query. But if he says, I think, I always use a guy's voice for SQL Server because he's dumb and stubborn and he refuses to ask for directions. He's all, trust me, I got this, when he doesn't usually got this. If SQL Server says, I think only one row is going to come back, and then five million rows come flowing through the plan, then that early decision of estimates versus actuals will have a cascading effect of problems throughout the rest of the plan. So when I'm trying to figure out, just did SQL Server build an appropriate plan for the work that we're trying to do, I'm going to work from right to left, top to bottom, just quick and quickly looking to see where did estimates versus actual go off by 10x or more? So in here, when you see like this 374% at the bottom, that's how far off its estimates were. 374%, if that was your child and they were doing school work at home, you'd be like, we're going to have to stay a little later and do some more exercises, except you wouldn't say that anymore because during this day and age, all you want to do is put your kids to bed so that you can do some drinking in peace. I say that, I don't have children, so it's very easy for me to joke about that kind of thing. I can drink all day long if I want to. This is espresso, as far as you know. So, not that I need that to be this level of amped up. It's kind of disturbing how excited I get about SQL Server. 
120 rows expected, 449 came back, 374% off. It's actually fine. 374% off, that's fine too. 1,091% off, Ugh, hold on, Tiger. Uh, we start to have a problem here. SQL Server only expected 121 rows to come back, 1,000 rows came back. Look, what's 900 rows between friends? As I continue to go across here, still vaguely correct, not even close to vaguely correct. So now we're so far off, it's like me with my expectations of what college life were going to be like. Well, I'm going to get 100%, and then I dropped out three semesters later. So we have a problem here where SQL Server doesn't quite understand or can't accurately predict how many rows are going to come back from some of these operators. Like that comments operator down there, SQL Server thought that only 229 rows would come back, and in reality, 895,000 rows came on back. When I see this, I start to ask questions. I start to go, what could I do in order to improve SQL Server's estimates? Now, in order to improve SQL Server's estimates, it's not just about numbers, because at the beginning, for example, SQL Server estimated that 120 rows would come back. SQL Server thought, and I'll hover my mouse over here so you can kind of sort of see, except you can't kind of sort of see, because God knows they put stuff all over the entire freaking plan. When SQL Server was looking at one particular location, like Reading or L London United Kingdom or China or whatever it was looking for, how many people did it think lived in that location? So SQL Server believed only 120 people lived in that location. Now, here comes the next trick. How active are those people? Have they been asking and answering a lot of questions at Stack Overflow? or hardly any at all. Let's go back over to the query, and let's think about how the query works. So let's go back over, and the query finally finished, and we'll look at the execution plan here in a second. But let's go back over and look at that query plan. So SQL Server is tasked with, go find the people who live in one particular location. After you find the people who live in that location, how talkative are they? How many posts and comments have they left? How's SQL Server supposed to know? SQL Server just assumes people are average. SQL Server doesn't know that some people in some locations like to talk a lot, like my apartment in San Diego. They also don't know that some locations people don't like to talk at all. So SQL Server had a rough idea of how many people lived in, say, Reading United Kingdom, but SQL Server didn't know that one of those people is John Skeet. John Skeet at Stack Overflow is absolutely legendary. I don't know how this person did as much talking as Stack Overflow as they did. John was the first person to break one million reputation points at Stack Overflow. Seemed like during like 2011, 2012, he was just sitting answering and answer, asking uh, or answering questions and posting comments like full time. He looked like Kermit at the typewriter, just banging away stuff continuously. And his answers were really good. His answers were epic. So SQL Server didn't know that John happened to be one of those people who live in, in uh, Reading. So to be fair, SQL Server didn't think that it was going to have to find a lot of people, or he thought it would find a few people in Reading, one of them's John, who was super active inside that time range. Hmm. Well, that's tricky. If I look back at that plan that I captured at that one moment in time, SQL Server knew there were 120 people but it had no idea how much John Skeet loved to talk. It had no idea it was going to bring back so however many comments. He has statistics on the locations of users, or does he? Let's look and see what that index says up there. We got Clippy up here going, Hey, buddy! Oh, I got an idea! You know what would make your query 98% faster? It'd be 98% faster if you had an index on users on location. And while you're at it, you should include some columns on there too. Clippy's even including an Envercare Max. That, that's rather large. At About Me, Stack Overflow, people can write their entire profile in the About Me if they want to. They can write a letter to Grandma if they want to. 
But Clippy says that this is going to make things 98% faster. So you know what? I'm, I'm actually going to do it. So let's go copy that out, close it, and then I'm going to go create that index while Clippy does, or while we go on and investigate more things about our query. Let's say we're going to call it location includes, and let's go create it. Indexes are free, right? Screw it. Who cares? Clippy's word is gold as far as I'm concerned. Let's do this. Now, Clippy said, just to be epically clear, Clippy said this would be 98% faster. The impact would be 98%. So now that the query is finished, let's go in and look to see. This query took 48 seconds in order to run. So I'm, I'm really bad at math, but if I take 48 seconds, if I say select 48 seconds times 0 0.02, because Clippy said it would be 98% faster, it looks like that after Clippy's index gets created, this query is going to finish in less than a second. Great. Clippy, you're a god among animated assistants. Now, the index finished creating. Let's see Clippy's amazing work. Now, just to be fair, I don't have to do this, but I'm going to because I want to give Clippy every possible chance. DBCC free proc cache. And I'm going to do it multiple times just so that y'all can see I have completely freed the plan cache. Plan cache was tied up in a closet. It wants to be free. And now let's go see how this thing works. One second. Would be 98% faster. That number's made up. It's out of nowhere. It's just as good as his suggestions were around your resume. Hey, buddy, looks like you're trying to get a new job. Maybe I can help. I had to get a new job after they let me go from the office team. They didn't, didn't make 98% improvement. We're still going. It's been going for quite a while here. So let's go take another look at that live execution plan. Let's go see what's going on now. So here, if I go click on it, now if I go in and look to see what SQL Server's estimates were, what the heck, SQL Server? Now you thought that only nine rows would come back. Damn it, SQL Server, your estimates got worse. Your estimates got exactly worse instead of better. Now, you thought only nine rows would come back, so you thought only 16 or 18 comments would come back? Come on, dude, really? And I'm bringing back almost a million comments already. Clippy is just trying to help but he's kind of like Siri and Cortana and whatever those other people's names are. Hey, Google. It's a starting point, but it's by no means the finishing point. And it's hilarious that the query took exactly the same length of time. In fact, it's slower. It's 49 seconds now rather than 48 seconds. Let's see if we go look at the actual execution plan now to see what it's got. Yeah, Clippy piped down now, didn't he? To be fair, if I go across and look at the index that he created, is it in there? It is. So in fairness, at least SQL Server did use the index. <sighs> Looks like Clippy isn't going to save us this time. So how can I get that estimate to be more accurate? How can I get SQL Server to do a better job of guessing how many rows are going to come back? Is this maybe a problem, or is there something else that I could do around encouraging SQL Server to understand how many rows are going to come back? Maybe an index would help, except I already have one, and SQL Server is already using it. SQL Server is making a list of the users and then going in and checking to see what posts they own and what comments they own. But because SQL Server doesn't know that Reading United Kingdom happens to contain the legendary John Skeet, SQL Server isn't going to make good decisions. To give you another example of why this is the case, if I go back up to the query itself, let's come all the way back up here. So up here, SQL Server knew that there were a certain number of no rows in Reading, but until it executed this, it had no idea who they were. Let's give him a shot at that. Let's break this query up into phases. Now, <laughs> Calumbunga says, just remove John Skeet. Just filter for where user is anything other than John Skeet. And 
So it's really funny that you say that. I'll do it. I'm not afraid of doing crazy stuff. And UID, or we'll say you display name, is anything other than John Skeet. And let's try the query again. Let's put the query up in, whoops, no, stop. X puts you into cache, and then puts you into production. And then let's go run the thing again. Gallumbunga, as far as I'm concerned, you have the answer. Because if we just delete John Skeet, if we work from right to left, top to bottom, our estimates here still suck the big one. They're like not even close. Our estimates all throughout here suck pretty bad, but look how much faster it is. John Skeet is the root of all our problems at Stack Overflow. I wish that I could go back to users and say things like that. I wish I could just say, as long as you remove your outlier data, you're going to be fine. But there is actually an interesting lesson inside here, which is the outliers are usually the cause of a lot of your problems, where SQL Server doesn't expect what's going to happen. Now, let's go take that back out, because unfortunately, we don't want to remove John Skeet. He is a national treasure, not of my country, but of another country. If I go back and run it again, like if this thing's going to be slow again now, can I give SQL Server a better chance at understanding where his estimates are going to go wrong? You can't see this from an estimated plan. If I go run the estimated plan, I'm only going to see what SQL Server estimated was going to happen, and of course that's going to be wrong. I really need to see the actual plan in order to get that. When I'm looking at the actual plan, one way to go get it was from that SP Blitz Who, which will show you the live running query plans. It's just that they're not animated. My goal as I'm looking through here is to see where estimates versus actuals went to hell in a handbasket. If you don't use SP Blitz Who, another trick you can use is you can go into Activity Monitor. Now, I know. Activity Monitor has a terrible reputation because it is pretty trashy. But over here, there's Show Live Execution Plan, which will show you if you're really, really lucky, an animated version of your query plan running. In my case, this has about a 20% uh, success rate. Like one time in a million, this thing actually works out for me. That's not 20%. Not very good at math. But for those of you who it does work for, great bully for you. This right here, what I normally run into is that I can't get the actual execution plan because the query is going by in somebody else's session or SP Blitz who isn't working. This has been a big problem for a really long time, and SQL Server 2019 brought out something amazing. SQL Server 2019 lets us get from the plan cache the last actual execution plan. In order to get it, we have to turn on an option. Oh, damn it, I already deleted that from up above. Let me go Control Z my way back to replacing that from where it was. I have to turn on this option plan, this option right here. Alter database scope configuration, set last query plans equals on. There is a performance overhead to this. The more you run queries, the more complex those queries are, the harder of an overhead this is going to be on SQL Server. I have never measured this, but I've had two students in class who turned it on during our functions exercises. Functions run row by row, for example, and their servers went to a crippling halt. I would just be careful to only turn this on whenever you're doing active query troubleshooting, like for the day. And I've got full instructions inside the demo script and a blog post about how you go and turn that on. Once you have it turned on, you can run SP Blitz Cache. SP Blitz Cache from the first responder kit gives you your top 10 most resource intensive queries. And here I can see El Numero Uno. Number one is that stored procedure, report top users by location. We can see that the plan was created in the last four hours. It has a low cost because SQL Server thought it was going to be cheap, but in reality, it has very high CPU. And then if I go and click on the query plan, ho, 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 instead of just seeing the estimates, now I see the actuals too, 
from the last time that the query ran. It's not the worst time that the query ran. It isn't the longest running or the most reads. It's just the last time the query ran. Now, also, when I ran SP Blitz Cache just now, what SP Blitz Cache does is give you the top 10 most resource intensive queries from the plan cache. The one you're looking for may not be that one. No problem. You can say stored proc name equals report top users by location, and you can filter out just that one queries plan. There are also other options that you can use, like uh, plan hash, query hash, all kinds of other stuff to find the query that you're looking for. So same thing here, when I'm looking to find out why a query went wrong, I'm looking right to left, top to bottom, trying to find where estimates versus actual are more than 10x off and how I can improve them. Well, the place where they went 10x off really here starts right at the first operation. SQL Server, I think I'm going to find about nine rows in here. Oops, my bad, 449 came back. The second most important thing that I can tell you, so I said the first most important thing I could tell you at the start was work right to left, top to bottom, looking for places where estimates versus actual veer more than 10x off. The second most important thing I can tell you is that when you see that happening, think about taking like an X-Acto knife and going right to where that is in the plan and saying, let me just cut operation right there. Can I get SQL Server to break this plan up into two phases? Can I do the first phase and dump that data into, say, a temp table so that SQL Server can then come back on the second pass and go, oh, oh, now I know how many rows are in that temp table and who they are. Let's go see if we can do it. So let's start by making a change to our query. Now, in this case, I should say too, I purposely write demo queries to be as easy to tune as possible so that I can teach you as much as I can in the time that we have together, which isn't very much because I don't really like you and my coffee shop is open downstairs. However, in real life queries, it's much more complicated because often the, the estimates versus actual when they go way off will be out like here and you're like, uh, SQL Server, what, what's happening right there at that point? And I wish that tools like Century One Plan Explorer would let me click on one operator and show me where in the T-SQL it is. That becomes much harder. I talk about that in my mastering classes. So here, though, it's easy. We started by looking to see what users are in that location. Let's rewrite our query just a little. Let's come back up to the top. Let's rewrite our query just a little to say, first, get the list of users in this location so we get better estimates. Create table users. Uh, what will we put in there? I might as well do all my work for the users table and just get it done with. So let's say ID int primary key clustered because each user has one ID. I don't always put uh, clustered indexes on my temp tables. I'm just trying to be a better person whenever I do live webcasts. So there you have it. If you didn't know that this was unique, then you probably wouldn't want to take this approach. Plus, you can see that I'm joining on that everywhere else. So maybe sorting it by that first might help me out. I don't want you to think that I always do that. Usually I just sling something into a temp table and see what happens. Uh, so reputation int display name envercare 40 about me, I want to say is an Envercare Max. I'm not 100% positive. I should probably set a good example there and look as well. Users, columns, yep, about me, Envercare Max. So there we go. So about me, Envercare Max curses you, whoever put that in there. And then doo -doo. Insert into users, that sounds awkward. ID, reputation, display name, about me, select. Uh, now, this, this comes into something a little bit tricky here. See how my query says, select top 1,000. Can I do top 1,000 in my temp table insert? Is that going to work? No because I'm ordering by the sum of something that isn't on the user's table. 
So this strategy of mine here to dump this stuff into the users table would backfire on something that has a hellacious number of rows. If it's like location equals null or location equals empty space where there are a ton of users who match. So I'm, I'm doing this here with keeping in mind that I'm aim optimizing it for things like Reading where there are a limited number of rows. I may need to come back and look at say passing in India to see how that works. So let's select ID, uh, reputation, display name, about me, from DBO users where location equals location. Now, instead of going from the users table here, I can go from the temp table. Then, instead of doing the filtering down here, I can simply remove that out because it's already taken care of by the filter above. When I'm doing tuning, I like to use another uh, name I, because it's going to sound crazy, but I usually have to do my work in production. Uh, I know. But the thing is, I have one of those weird jobs as a consultant where people are often asking ask me to fix something on an urgent, uh, you know, crushing basis where the production is going down and we got to fix something as quickly as possible. I don't want to alter the production stored procedure. I'd rather put in like BGO at the end of it. So those are my initials. I don't use my just first and last name for reasons that will be obvious to fifth graders who like to make poop jokes. Uh, at heart, I am a fifth grader who likes to make poop jokes. Um, if you can't make uh, temp table or store procedures in production, you can also do temp store procedures. So I can say, for example, pound uh, report top users by location. This also works well. Uh, so if you want to test something and you don't want anyone else to see the same stored procedure that you do, this works great. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Now let's run our, now I don't have to ever do free proc cache again because I have this uh, stored procedure just that's all entirely my own, just like my favorite car. Let's go hit execute on this. Three, two, one. Do I have live? Yeah, I have uh, actual plans turned on. Now we know that this query used to take like uh, 50 seconds in order to run. Let's go hop over to our window with SP Blitz who and go take a look to see what the live query plan looks like and let's see if our estimates get any better. Now, hmm, one of the cool things about live query stats, you can't really tell what percentage done something is. When you're looking at percentages, that's percentages of the rows that were brought back. But you don't know if that's 42%. Because what if, and I'm from just to be clear, I'm pointing at this little fella right here. So what if, or we'll even go to the very beginning one. So the first one around users, what if SQL Server thought 449 rows were going to come back, but in reality only seven did? Or... What if it's only just read the first seven rows of 449? You really don't have a good way of telling when you're looking at these plans. However, I sure do spot a problem. Even though we've only read a few rows, ah, that's terrible. SQL Server thought that 452 comments were going to come back, but in reality, 220,000 came back. Die, that's not so good. And in fact, things are getting worse. I don't sing often in webcasts, but that's pretty terrible right down there. That's a minute and a half, and this little fella is still going. Let's go back and look one more time at our estimated or our uh, actual execution plan that's flying in progress. So let's go in and see here. SQL Server still only has seven of the 449 rows. You know what he did? John Skeet, it's probably number seven. He hit John Skeet, and now he's in the sad process of finding all of the things that John Skeet has ever done. It's going to be a hell of a lot of work. John Skeet is a prolific person. This query plan represents a whole lot of work, but what's missing? If you're going to do a whole lot of work in SQL Server, what would you expect to happen? What would you see on this execution plan that we're not seeing here? 
Now you might say a missing index request, and that's fair because we do have a couple of index seeks plus key lookups. That's one opportunity. You don't see Clippy piping up going, hey buddy. Anytime you see an index seek followed by a key lookup, you could immediately go hover your mouse over that key lookup. So like if I hover my mouse over the key lookup on post, if I hover my mouse over the key lookup down at the bottom, there's an output list. These are the list of things that SQL Server wishes it would have had over on the index. If we added this over to the index, the index would suddenly be covering and we wouldn't have to do all of these uh, key lookups. Tanya, Tanya nails it. Tanya says the other thing that we're missing, so one thing is that we're missing missing index hints, but both Tanya and Junior DBA over in the chat both say parallelism. SQL Server's like, don't mind me. This query looks really cheap. I should be able to execute this with just one core. This query only cost 3.5 query bucks. That's nothing. When I was your age, I carried five query bucks around in my pocket all the time. So SQL Server doesn't think that this is going to be more work, so it's not allocating a lot of cores to it. So there are two angles of attack that I could take. Now, the query finished. Let's go over and take a look at the actual execution plan. <laughs> Moving it to putting in the temp table made it go to four minutes. Oh, that's just delightful. Putting in the temp table made it go to four minutes. If I look over at the execution plan, here's what Galambunga was asking for over in the chat. Galambunga says, hey, I don't see a yellow bang on the plan. Yeah, we don't get yellow bangs all the time in the, in the live query plans because it may not have started spilling yet, for example. Now, clearly, it has spilled here. We're spilling to tempdb because poor SQL Server didn't estimate anywhere near enough memory in order to sort all these rows. So now, if I work from right to left, top to bottom, estimates versus actual, let me zoom out and come back in here. So top right, SQL Server believed 449 users would come back. They did. SQL Server then thought, I'm going to go look over in the post table to see how many posts they have. He was vaguely correct. Now we get over to the comments table and it's become a poop show. Oh man, I love the SQL Server Management Studio team has been on fire really doing imp impressive improvements that make my life easier as a query tuner. They haven't fixed everything. They're still addicted to the shoulder data cannon. But you see the times on here. It's showing me that this operator in the plan effectively finished at around 52 milliseconds in. There are a lot of gotchas to this, what the times mean on each of these, and I have a link to Eric Darling's excellent blog post over on the resources for this session, talking about how the, the time on the operators means different things depending on whether these are in row mode or whether they're in batch mode. But if I'm gonna go look at what the problem is, holy cow, my estimates versus actual went to hell in a handbasket right here. Now I might look at what could I do in order to improve that. Can I get SQL Server to have a better understanding of how many comments one particular user left? When I'm doing query tuning out in the real world, when I start my query tuning efforts, I have a half hour hourglass that I keep on my desk. And I try to flip it whenever I start query tuning to make myself check in every half an hour and go, am I on the right track? So that when I look down and this thing is empty, I can then start to go, oh, 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 I don't know that I made a lot of progress in the last half hour and that I was necessarily on the right track. And is it time for me to maybe switch tracks and what progress do I think that I can make in the next half hour that will be the most effective? So I know when I look at this query plan, I don't think parallelism is going to help. If I balance the work across multiple threads, I don't know that that's going to improve things. If I do index tuning, I don't know that that's going to improve things either, but I do know that it will reduce the number of key lookups that I have to do. If I hover my mouse over this and I look at the output list, if the output list is fairly small, I might go in there and add those in so that SQL Server has, doesn't have to do all these key lookups back and forth. We've come to a branch inside here, dear reader, and I will let y'all choose 
do you want to work on indexing or do you want to look at parallelism? Because I have tricks up my sleeve either way. So over in the chat or in comments, tell me which one you would rather prefer. And I'll give you all 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, like 1. This is saying indexing. Santa saying parallelism. Jeb says, why not force the hash join? You could totally work on that. Hugo says, I want to fix the dang estimate. I, I hear you. It's tough. Several people. Looks like lots of people are saying indexing. A few of you are saying parallelism. So we'll try indexing first, and then we'll see how much time we have left over and see whether we want to play around with parallelism. And I love that Hugo, Hugo's the only person who's like, I want to fix the, uh, fix the, uh, uh, yeah, no, that your name, no, I, I, I rethought that. The one in chat who's like, hey, why can't you say my name? And I'm like, yeah, no, 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 not so much. Okay, so when I'm going to do index tuning, if I'm going to go s trackle the index tuning problem on this, anytime you see an index seek followed by a key lookup, hover your mouse over the key lookup and then look at things like the output list down at the bottom. If the output list is fairly small, like think not Envercare Max, if the output type is very small, then I don't mind including it in indexes. Generally speaking, when I do index tuning lectures, I talk about aiming for around five indexes or less per table and around five columns or less per index. Now that guideline, I'm very careful not to say rule, that guideline stems from the fact that I have five fingers on this hand and I have five fingers on this hand, so it's really easy for folks to remember. The more columns that you include on your indexes, whether they're in the keys or in the includes, makes less records to be available on each of your 8K pages. It makes the index larger, it slows down inserts, updates, and deletes, causes more blocking, more deadlocking, especially when you put them on columns that change all the time, like score. <clears throat> But score is a tiny number, so I might be okay with that in this case. Let's give it a shot. So let's go look at the indexes that exist on that table. That is the posts table. So let's go see SP Blitz index, table name equals posts. SP Blitz Index is an open source stored procedure originally written by Kendra Little, uh, now works for Redgate Software out of the UK. And in here, the first result set gives you the list of indexes that already exist. The second set is Clippy. I haven't got any idea how I could possibly make this faster. If you need me, I'll be over here doing key lookups. Then down below is the list of data types on the table. So I can see, for example, this table's not small. This table has a lot of columns in it. I can see, for example, that score is an integer. I like this as just one single quick control panel so that I can look at different columns and figure out whether or not they're safe to add instead of jumping around to like Object Explorer. If I go back over to that execution plan, the index that we're talking about was on owner user ID. Can we add the score column to that index on owner user ID? Well, that index on owner ID, owner user ID, only has one column in it, so I'm down. If we scroll across, we also have the create T SQL, so I can copy that out. So I'm going to say, now on this index, I'm going to say, I want to say it's with drop existing equals exiting, drop existing equals on. I never exactly remember what that is. So let's then say score. Let's see if that works. I don't actually know. Okay. That's that one. Now while that runs, let's look at this other one. The other one was on the comments table. So the comments is also on user ID. Let's hover our mouse over that key lookup and then see what does SQL Server also need to do the key lookup there for. The key lookup that he's doing is on score. So it looks like we need to add score to this index as well. So this is, just remember when I switch windows, it's the index on user ID on score. Let's go see. SP Blitz index, table name equals comments. 
And then let's go look to see. Come on, big fella. Would be really funny if this was blocked. It is, it's blocked. It wants a schema stability lock. Uh, oh, good, it finished. I got lucky on that one. Um, so now if we go in, here's the index on uh, user ID. Looks like it only has one key and one include. So I'm kind of comfortable adding a column to that. Let's go take that guy. So create that index. And then come back over to our other window where we had our indexing work. And then let's put this over here. Include creation date and score with drop existing equals on. There that goes. I really like having a little breadcrumb trail of the changes that I made when I'm going about tuning queries to see whether it made a difference or not. The other thing we should do is we should go back and try the original version of the query now that we've done this. And maybe the temp table version will be faster. Maybe the original version will be faster. We'll go see. Now, when this does, uh, after this thing finishes, do, 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 do. Take a second there. Oh, you know what else is really cool? Uh, if you fire open a web browser and look for another job, if you fire open a web browser and go to brentozar.com slash go slash progress, brentozar.com slash go slash progress, Solomon Rutsky has a DMV query out here that will get you the progress of an index's creation. So you can copy paste that out and you can see how much longer your index creation has to go. This is over at brantozar.com slash go slash progress. You do have to know the SPID that you're looking for, but the thing that I find really cool with this is it'll give you exactly how much time it estimates is remaining. But you see, as soon as I paste this in, all of a sudden SQL Server finishes. <laughs> Because he's watching to see as soon as you know that he, you mean business about that index getting created, then all of a sudden he tends to finish his business. All right. Now, before I run this again, to go see how much better or worse it is, I kind of skipped something. When I'm trying to measure whether a query gets better or worse, I very rarely use time because time is so unpredictable. God knows the year 2020 is up down unpredictable. I rarely use time because it can vary so much depending on what else is going on in the server. Um, instead, what I usually use is logical reads. If you scroll down through here, these are really useful numbers. Each one of these logical reads is one 8K page read. Generally speaking, the less data you read, the faster your query will go. I, rather than running a calculator across all this, because that's a giant pain in the rear, I'm going to copy that out, and I'm going to go over to statisticsparser.com. And at statisticsparser.com, written by Richie Rump out of South Florida, gives you a really nice user interface to like slice and dice, kind of like Excel. So I can see here's the total number of logical reads across all my tables. It's also helpful to see which table you're doing the most reads on. So my before number is about 3.8 million logical reads. Now that we have our new improved indexes, let's try our query again. <laughs> Now, remember, he did take four minutes before when I had the temp table version, and I certainly do not like that temp table version at this point. Let's go look at the live query plan. Now, it is smaller. It's more compact because we've gotten rid of the key lookups, but the estimates still suck. The estimates are still terrible. Let's see, though, if I go and look at the actual execution plan again. I should have also seen what the total number of rows this thing ended up bringing back. But, yeah, see, he's still just at user number seven. I don't think this is, this might be a better solution, but I don't think it's a great solution. Let's do this. Rather than hitting the, the temp table version, let's hit stop, and let's go back and try the real version because the real original version was taking like 58 seconds. It was like 50, 58 seconds, somewhere inside there. Now, and 
if I could have freed the plan cache. I, I did create indexes. Well, we'll see if we go look at, that's true, I even dropped the existing indexes, so that'll work. If I go look at the live query plan, see how SQL Server did guess incorrectly still about the number of rows that would that want to come back? This is this in here, especially the next set is where Hugo really wants to jump in and start work. And SQL Server is comically incorrect about how many comments John Skeet has left. Ah, uh, well. But it looks like it finished. Let's go back and see. I, I really... It, Makes pisses me off that when I try to close a live query plan, SQL Server's like, something changed. Nothing changed. This window is read only. There's no way I can change the query plan. But I still have to hit no. Close all that crap out of there. So now let's come back over here. And the query finished in half the time. It finished in half the time. That is not bad. It's 30 seconds instead of 50 some seconds. Okay. We have nine minutes left. You wanted parallelism. We've got to go see if we have parallelism because we actually, we don't have parallelism inside the plan. It's closer. It's not wonderful, but it's closer. Well, the, <laughs> the estimates aren't. The estimates are still smoking weed. I guess weed would make you laid back. That's why we don't have parallelism, right? Because people start smoking weed. All right, so let's see if we can inject parallelism. Another thing that I love that Microsoft has been working on so much lately, I guess I'm going to ditch that temp table version of the stored proc. Let's go back over to the real stored proc. So it was report top users by location. Stored procedures. Report top users by location. Uh, Nuno Bunny says, my friend wants to know if we lose parallelism when we use a table variable inside the stored proc. Not exactly. So you can get parallelism with a table variable depending on what you're pulling out of it, but inserts, updates, and deletes when you're modifying the contents of a table variable, that goes single-threaded. And because SQL Server tends to have no idea what's going on inside the table variable, even in 2019, it only knows the number of rows, not their contents, we still end up being likely to get single-threaded plans because we get such low-ball estimates when a table variable is involved. So here's the stored procedure that we're back on originally. So let's copy that out. And one of the things that, that SQL Server, that I, I used to not be a fan of, I used to not be a fan of query hints. I used to not be a fan of query hints because I'm like, you don't know more than the SQL Server Query Optimizer. Stop trying to boss it around. Hints are not flexible. They don't give you a lot of, of wiggle room later. But right now, I, I kind of want to use a query hint because SQL Server is so insane about this query cost. This query cost is going to cost less than one query buck. Oops. My bad, you know, it's costing eight query cents when in reality this thing's taken like 30 seconds. And I can run it over and over again. There's no th cost threshold for recompile. SQL Server doesn't automatically go back and recompile whenever a query plan is absolutely terrible. And it also doesn't know how many times this query is going to run. SQL Server puts the same amount of work into a query, whether it's going to run one time or a million times. So maybe I need to start using a query hint to kind of guide SQL Server along. I need to guide SQL Server along by saying, hey, look, use more CPU cores. And this max op, which is funny, max drop doesn't work either. This doesn't do it. All this tells SQL Server is, look, if you want to use more cores, here's how many cores you can use. So let's go in and hit this. I'd hit that. And then go in and get our estimated execution plan again. And if I look at our execution plan, we still don't have parallelism inside here. There's nothing inside here in terms of parallelism. That option max dot hint, that doesn't tell you to do parallelism. To do parallelism, you need a different query hint. So I'm going over and Googling because that's how I roll. SQL Server parallelism query hint. They added a new execution plan hint that you can use to go suggest a uh, parallel plan. And I'm going to do just like you would. I'm going to copy paste it directly from the internet and go paste it into production because that's how I roll. 
Um, so this hint tells SQL Server, hey, I would rather you think about uh, going parallel with this query plan. Now, Ian over on YouTube says, what about cost threshold for parallelism? Does that affect it? It does, but only when your query is expensive enough. Here, SQL Server's cost threshold for parallelism at less than one, or your SQL Server's query cost at less than one, ain't nobody setting their cost threshold for parallelism down to zero. So cost threshold for parallelism makes no sense here when SQL Server's estimates are this bad. So if I put in this hint, if I say, hey, look, try and use a parallel plan if you can, let's go see if SQL Server will go through and build a parallel plan. And if so, is it faster? So we have two questions when I hit execute. One, is the SQL Server going to use a parallel plan? Two, is it going to go faster? Three, two, one, execute. Then I'll go pop over in SP Blitz Who and go see if we can get the live query plan and go see what's going on. And we have parallelism. Now we have parallelism. So the query is going to go faster, right? This particular server has eight CPU cores in it. Let's go into Task Manager, look at performance. Oops, this SQL Server has eight CPU cores in it. My max stop is probably like four, but still at least the query should go four times faster, right? Four times faster than 30 seconds. That should be pretty quick enough. My users should be happy about that, except you know what's funny? It's slower. It's, it's not actually going faster. It's going slower. A lot slower, terribly slow. <sighs> so what's happening? So what's happening if I go over to SP Blitz Hoop and I look at the live execution plan again. So look to see where that parallelism operator is. Where that parallelism operator is, I want you to think about everything downstream, everything from this side back all went parallel across multiple cores. But that doesn't mean that this work is each evenly split up. What it means is that this plan is three-dimensional. From that point back, this plan is three-dimensional, and there is one plan per core. So in the beginning, God made, in the beginning, SQL Server went to look to see how many rows it would find per location, and it divided those rows across threads, but not necessarily evenly. And then whoever poor sucker got John Skeet, they are screwed. They are doing all of the work for John Skeet when the rest of the query is sitting around, or the rest of the cores are sitting around idle, not doing anything. We are now at two minutes. The same query that ran in 28 seconds single threaded is now running over two minutes in parallel. <laughs> so when I'm thinking about building query, building and tuning query plans, this is a great point to stop and think about our, our 30 minute tackle. We made pretty good improvements. We made the query basically twice as fast when we looked at the indexing approach. We made it slower with the tempdb approach. We made it slower with the parallelism approach. When I'm thinking about query tunings, let's go over the resources slide for this particular session. If I go to brentozar.com slash go slash tune queries, this is where you can see the examples that I'm working with. You can see past videos of me tuning other things. And if you go all the way down to the bottom, I've got my be creepy process. And this is the process that I use whenever I'm doing query tuning. So I called it the be creepy process because of these are the things that I do in order when I'm tuning queries. And when you watch the rest of my query tuning videos, you'll notice that I, I tend to steer pretty close towards those. I go in order. But this session, I didn't. I went in kind of the wrong order. I went from indexing first. Remember Clippy said, hey buddy, this query would make your query, this index would make your query 98% faster. Let's do this. And it didn't make my query 98% faster. In fact, it made no difference on the query. So I did add a couple of indexes that helped cut it in like 50%, but users never want 50%. Users want 100% faster. And then we played around with parallelism. 
and we didn't get across the finish line here. We had a pretty frustrating hour where we didn't make a lot of progress. Instead, go through this, as I explain inside these other sessions, work through them in order, and you'll have a much better experience. If you go through and start by running SP Blitz and SP Blitz Index to check to, check to go see your server's health overall, end user requirements gathering, ask them what their finish line looks like. Does the query need to be tuning, in, or do you get, say, one hour to tune or two hours to tune? capture your query metrics, read the query and experiment with query costs, work through them in that order, don't come from the bottom up. That's what the bee creepy process is all about. Everything that I talk through today across this session is all available at brentozar.com slash go slash tune queries. That is everything that I wanted to talk with y'all about. Now we are going to switch into the uh, prize session for the SQL Saturday Oslo. And at this point, I will drop out and I'm going to go downstairs and have some coffee from my local coffee shop because it's now 8.15 a.m. here in San Diego. So thank you all for hanging out with me and I will see you again uh, later. I'll actually see you probably next weekend at SQL Saturday Gothenburg too. So adios, everybody. Thank you, Brent. And that's the stream. Ta-da! Yes, we are uh, getting close to uh, our final. Leave that webinar. Order. There we go. Ta-da! Oh, let me switch over and uh, move this over here so that I get vaguely decent white balancing. Uh, so there we go, folks. So you got to sit in on uh, SQL Saturday Oslo, and I'll put that up on the site uh, too as well. So. There we go. That's the first time I've ever tried to, to simulcast in in uh, in front of go to webinar and to the streaming with y'all, and that I think it worked out pretty well. It wasn't great because I had this uh, camera sitting literally in the middle of my monitor the whole time I was going, and it didn't wasn't perfect, but uh, I could live with that. It's better than uh, better than nothing. The more people that I can reach, the better. Because of course y'all wouldn't have gone to uh, SQL Saturday Oslo because you're addicted to things like Twitch and Facebook and uh, YouTube streaming. Well, that's it. So I am going downstairs to go get myself my uh, blocks and bagel and coffee. I will see y'all later. Adios, everybody. <laughs>